Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhad. In this session, we'll look at real estate passive loss limits and specifically we're going to be looking at the two exceptions. This topic is covered in an income tax course, the CPA exam regulation, as well as the enrolled agent exam. As always, I would like to remind you, my viewers, to connect with me on a professional level, which is through LinkedIn or personal level on Facebook. You want to make sure you subscribe to my YouTube and please like the videos if you do like them, share them with others, email them to others, share them with your classmate and whoever's interested. I do have a Twitter account and on my website, you can always reach me and view my lectures organized by course and chapter. This recording is brought to you by Jaeger CPA Review. If you like this recording, you can view hundreds of hours of similar recording on Jaeger CPA Review. You can review thousands of multiple choice questions with solutions, detailed solutions for that matter, uh, simulations, which is exercises and problems. You can have access to a textbook, including a physical and an online textbook, audio lectures for retention purposes, electronic flashcards, plus other resources. If you happen to use Jaeger, use the PMF code. You will get 10% off of the best value course. You would benefit yourself and benefit this channel. So what is the idea of this session? Let's kind of go back to what we started with. This chapter is about passive activity losses. And if you remember what we talked about back in the 80s, early 80s, uh, depreciation was acre. So we had high depreciation early on. Interest rate was high and we, high, we had a high marginal tax rate. And if you remember, we said, let's assume the two doctors and a lawyer combined their funds, borrowed additional funds, and they invested in a strip mall where they rented the property and they generated losses. And from those losses, they were able to offset income, active income, portfolio income, and W-2 income. So what happened, the government said well, that's not allowed. And start in 1986, they have the passive activity rule. So the passive activity rule basically broke down income into three categories. I know this is a review. This is maybe the second or the third time review as active income, portfolio income, and passive income. And this is what we talked about in the prior three sessions in this chapter. Passive income cannot, cannot offset portfolio or active income. So if you have passive, passive loss to be more specific, not passive income, passive losses cannot, cannot reduce active and portfolio income. Now, what is passive loss? Well, we said any trade or business or income producing activity in which the taxpayer does not participate. Okay. Subject to certain exception, all rental activities. And because the Congress was trying to shoot for that specific group, I mean, mainly rental people involved in rental activities. And what they said is all rental activities are considered passive. That's what they started with because they were, they were trying to curb this practice where people participate in those rental uh, rental schemes generate the losses and deduct the losses against their active as well as their portfolio income. So that's who they targeted. Then it was a little bit unfair for certain for certain real estate professional. Basically, because if that's what you do, if that's what you do, you rent property, that's your business. Then in 1994, they said, well, guess what? We're going to give you a relief provision. And this is where the one of the major exception comes. We have two exceptions. Generally, losses from Rental real estate are treated like other passive losses. There are two significant exceptions to this rule. So this is what we need to talk about. So generally speaking, rental activity is passive unless you meet those two specific rules. Exception one, real estate professional. If you are considered a real estate professional, and obviously we need to talk about what does it mean to be a real estate professional. And this is where in 1994, during President Clinton times, they give this relief provision. Or except, exception number two, if you are materially participant in a real estate rental activity, you would look at exception two as well. So we're going to take it, you know, step by step and look at each exception separately. Exception number one, if you are considered a real estate professional. Okay, so rental real estate losses are not treated as passive if the following conditions are met. What are those conditions? Here we go. Taxpayer perform more than half of his or her personal service in real property business. What does that mean? It means more than 50% of the time, of your time during the year, you are involved, okay, in real property business in which the taxpayer, you have to materially participate. Now, what does materially participate? Remember, part of it is some of, some of the conditions is greater than 500 hours. That's not only that. This is only one condition. And 
taxpayer perform more than 750 of services in these real estate business as a, as a material participant. Now notice, you have to meet both of these conditions. You have to spend more than 50% of your time in this business. And to be more specific, you have to exceed 750 hours. So simply put, if you have another full-time job, most likely you are going to fail this real estate professional test. Okay? So again, this exception is designed for people who are involved in real estate in real estate development and real estate rental activities. It's basically a relief for them because if their losses are passive, then they can they, they can only offset them against passive income. So it gave them this relief. Now, personal services performed. If you're an employee, they are not treated as performed in real property or business unless you own 5% or more of the business. So if you are an employee and you are participating in those activities, to be counted, for that amount to be counted, you have to be 5% or more owner of that business. So simply put, you have to be part owner. Let's take a look at, a, at the first example. D during the current year, Della performed personal service activities as follow. 900 hours as personal financial planner, okay? 550 hours in real estate development business. And six, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> sorry. And 600 hours in rental activity. Any loss Della incur in either real estate activity will not be subject to the passive activity loss. Why? Being a non-rental business, non-rental business, the real estate development business is deemed active under the more than 500 hour participation rule. So this business, the real estate development business, okay, you are active basically. Why? Because it's more than 500 hours in the real estate development business. The real estate rental activity is active because more than 50% of the personal service are devoted to real property, trade, or business. What does that mean? Look, uh, Della worked 900 hours as a personal financial planner, 550 in the real estate development, and 600 hours in the real estate. So let's add them up. That's 5, and that's, that's 14, that's 20. 11 20 so that's 2050 hours notice of these hours okay hopefully you know that if we take 1150 1150 divided by the total hours that's going to be greater than 50 percent okay what does that mean it means the rental property she is considered she is considered uh, she exceeded the 750 hours because she did work more than 750 hours and she's actively participating. Therefore, it's a re basically she's considered a real estate professional. As a result, any losses from either the real estate activity can offset active and portfolio sources of income. Likewise, any income from these activities is active, non-passive. Okay, so here, uh, what's her name? Della is a real estate professional, real estate professional. So this is the first exception. The second exception, to qualify for this exception, so this is basically a lower standard than the first one. This is a lower standard, okay? To qualify for this exception, and I'm not really sure if you remember when I told you, when I discussed this activity, I said, I will tell you, I will tell you later that I used to own a property and I used to live on the first floor and I used to rent the second floor. So I used to be in the re rental real estate business. Okay, so I used to live in the first floor and uh, rent the second floor. I always had losses because of depreciation expense and interest expense on the mortgage, always generate losses. Was I able to deduct the losses? And the answer, yes. Was I a real estate professional? I was not a real estate professional. So I could not deduct my losses under real estate professional because I was working in a CPA firm. I was teaching part-time, so that's not what I did. I qualify under this this rule. So let's let, let's take a look at this rule. To qualify for this exception, the, the taxpayer must actively participate in rental activity, which I did, and owns at least 10% of all interest in the activity. I owned the whole property, 100%. What does active participation define? So under this rule, how do we define you're an active participant? Before I, 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 I move on, just wanna, you know, this is considered mom, and pop exception so this is for basically people like me i was not 
pop back then. I was still single, but the fact is it's it's that. So active participation means, so I already met the ownership because I own the property, so I already met this. So what is active participation? Requires only participation in making management decision in significant and bona fit sense. What does that mean? It means approving tenants, which I did. I reviewed their application, decided if I should accept or not. Deciding on rental terms. I did draft the uh, contract, approving capital or repair expenditure. So basically I did all the decision on day-to-day -day basis. What does that mean? It means I'm active participant in rental activity and I own the property. I qualify under this exception. The, the, now the, the, the question is how much losses can I deduct? Well, guess what? I can deduct up to 25% of losses against active or portfolio income. And I still remember every year I would have between two to $5,000 in losses, depending if I had a lot of repairs that year. So I was always able to deduct the losses. Now, bear in mind, Congress is generous to, uh, to a point. So there is, there is a... Uh, there is a uh, there is a threshold. The benefit to reduce is reduced by 50% of taxpayer AGI in excess of 100,000. Simply put, once you exceed the 100,000, benefits are reduced, and you go from 100,000. Once you get to 150,000, you lose all this benefit. And back then, unfortunately, I never lost anything. Unfortunately, because I wanted to make more than 150,000, I was not. I was right out of college and. Uh, I did not have that income. And we're talking here, I mean, just to kind of give you a general idea, 2001, 2002, 2003, 2004. So uh, so th this is the time period where I had that property. I sold it, actually, I sold my property in 2006, right before the crash, the, the, uh, the, uh, the real estate market crash, which was good. Now, all right, let's go back here. Um, now, when I'm counting my hours, okay, spouse work is taken into consideration to satisfy my material participation. So back then I was not married, but if I was married, any participation by my wife is considered, is, 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 is counted toward material participation, okay? Spouse hours are not taken into account when evaluating whether a taxpayer has worked more than 750 hours. If I want to qualify under the professional uh, real estate, uh, real estate, my spouse's hours, my wife's hours will not be counted. But it will be counted for exception number two if I'm, materi if I'm, if I'm materially participating in the business, but not for the 750 hours. Let's take a look at an example. Brad has an AGI of 90,000 before considering real activities. Brad also had 85,000 of losses. So that's 85,000 of losses from a real estate rental activity in which he actively participate. There we go. So actively participate. He also actively participate in another real estate, uh, rental real estate activity for which he had income of 30,000. Let's offset those two against each other. He, he has no other pass. He has other passive activity income of 36. Well, we're going to also reduce those okay of the net of the net rental loss let's first let's take them separately of of the net rental loss we're gonna take 85,000 minus 30 we're gonna have 55,000 of net rental loss okay and the 36,000 offset the passive activity income because this this 36,000 so, so from the net rental is 55, we are still at a loss. Now we can use this 36. What we're left with is we're still at $19,000 losses. Now this $19,000 losses can be deducted against active or portfolio income. Why? Because I'm actively participating and we're assuming here that Brad owned the property more than 10% at least, okay? So this $19,000 is deductible. Okay, and he's below 100,000, therefore there is no limitation for the deduction. Okay, so that's the 25,000. And remember, when, when you're talking, when you're talking about this, uh, when you're talking about exception number two, remember, remember me, because I use, again, it's for mom and pop rental property. So if you own a property, you could basically deduct up to 25,000, assuming your AGI does not exceed, does not exceed between 100 to 150 okay and the best way to illustrate all these concepts is to work few examples obviously let's look at the first at the first example during the current year 
uh, Jean, a CPA, performs services as follow. One, 1,800 hour in tax practice and 50 hours in an apartment leasing operation in which he has 15% interest. Because of his oversight duties, Jean is considered active participant. Hold on a second. So now you are active participant and you own 15%. Well, guess what? You're under this rule. You're active participant and you own at least 15%. Okay. He expects that his share of the loss realized from the apartment leasing operation will be 30000 and his tax practice will show profit of approximately 80000 Gene is single and he has no other income. Discuss the character and treatment of the income and losses generated by these activities. That's good news for Gene. Okay. Um, oops, let's go back here. So income from the CPA practice, from the tax practice, is, is 80000 that's the income. Then the losses is 30,000. Now, can he deduct the losses? And the answer is yes, he can. Why he can deduct the losses? Under the mom and pop exception number two. Here, exception number two works because he is active. He is active participant and he owns more than five, more than 10% of the property. Therefore, Gene can deduct, I'm sorry, uh, 30,000. Oh, no, sorry. You cannot deduct 30,000. How much can you deduct? You can deduct 25,000 because he is not subject to any limit. So Gene can deduct, let me just erase this. From the from the 30,000, Gene can deduct 25,000. Simply put, his taxable income all in all becomes 65,000. And that's a lot. That's a huge that's a huge deduction. That's a huge deduction because think about it if 25,000 and if you are in the 25% tax bracket, let me show you how much taxes he would have saved times 0.25. It's 6,250. Most probably he's not in the 25. Maybe let's see 20%. 25,000 multiplied by 0.2. Well, that's you saved five thousand dollars. Assuming he's in the twenty percent tax bracket, he saved five thousand dollars in taxes. Not bad at all. We'll take it. Okay. Let's look at another example. Gu has one hundred and five thousand dollars of losses from a real estate rental activity in which he she actively participate. She has other rental income of twenty five thousand and other passive activity income of thirty two. Okay. Her AGI before considering these. Items of income and loss is 95,000. So AGI is 95,000. Below the 100,000, we don't have to worry about anything. How much rental loss can you deduct against active and portfolio income? Ignoring the at-risk rule, we're not going to worry about the at-risk rule. Does she have any suspended losses to carry? Explain. Okay, so let's start with losses. Let's So 105,000 from the real estate rental activity. She has other rental income of 25. Now this is going to reduce... It's going to reduce the losses by 25,000. And other passive activity income of 32, well, that's going to also reduce the losses. So overall, we are left with $48,000 of losses. What can you do with these losses? What we can do is we can use, since she is below, oh, no, she's not below. Uh, oh, yeah, AGI is 95. Since AGI is 95,000, we can use of this amount, 25,000, to reduce our AGI. So simply put, her AGI is 95,000. She can reduce it by 25,000. If she used 25,000 of the 48, what's left is 23,000. That 23,000 will be carried for future years. Okay. So again, the 25,000 is a really big deduction. It's, it's, it's a decent deduction. Basically, you reduced your income by more than 25%. Okay, so you reduced your taxes by more than 25%, which is really, really good deduction. Again, this is the design for mom and pop. Okay, uh, let's take a look at one more example. Uh, this year, Maria works uh, 1,200 hours as a computer consultant. 320 hours in a real estate development business and 400 hours in real estate rental activities. So let's look at Maria. Let's do this in red. So we have Maria. So real estate 
development business she put 320 hours real estate rental equal to 400 hours 400 hours uh, Juan her spouse works 250 hours in real estate development business now we have Juan in the real estate development business 250 and 180 hours in the rental business 180 hours in the rental business Maria earned 60,000 as a computer consultant while she and Juan lost 18,000 in the rental in the real estate development business and 26,000 in the real estate rental business so the losses from the real estate development is 18,000 and from the real estate rental is 26,000 all right now let's take it step by step and first take a look at to see if we are active uh, participant in this business okay so let's look at Maria's Maria's now for the real estate development business for this business for material participation, remember we can combine the hours. For, for this business, if we want to see if there's material participation, let's do it in a different color, we can add the 320 of Maria plus the 250 to see if we exceed 500, that's 570. Guess what? For this business, we are materially participating in the real estate development business. Therefore, this whole income is active. Okay, what does that mean? If it's, well, that's not income but all these losses is active therefore the rental loss okay is active it means we can offset it against active income and portfolio income now for the 750 hours okay we cannot combine we cannot combine so for maria let's see 320 plus 7 plus 400 is 720 that's less than 750 and obviously this is less than 750 for Juan so they cannot be considered real estate professional they cannot be considered real estate professional because they can they cannot combine the hours for the 750 test they can combine the hours for the active participation okay but they cannot combine the hours okay they can combine the hours for material participation but not for the professional real estate test they cannot combine their hours therefore they cannot be considered they cannot be considered real estate professional so for the rental property what's going to happen is you're not a real estate professional but you can still qualify for the $25,000 deduction under the mom and pop deduction so basically what's going to happen this loss we're going to be able to use 25,000 and what's left is 1,000 in losses so this is basically the 26 is negative and the 25 is positive so what we're left with is 1000 in losses so she can deduct an additional 25000 from the real estate rental property not the whole thing and 1000 will be left okay because they are not real estate professional but they are materially participating and we're going to have to assume that they own more than 10% of the property okay so not bad at all so if we really all in all let, let, let's let's think about this if maria earns sixty thousand dollars from her consulting business she's going to deduct eighteen thousand from the active business of the real estate development and she's going to be able to deduct twenty five thousand from the rental real estate this is not bad at all i mean we almost wiped out let me just show you what's going to happen is sixty thousand minus eighteen thousand minus twenty five thousand it her taxable income is seventeen thousand but again here we are disregarding the at risk limit and other rules but generally speaking if there's enough basis she can reduce her taxable income to seventeen thousand now if we take the standard deduction then it's gonna basically wipe out all her income not bad so this is where the losses really help in the in those situations if you have any questions, any comments about uh, this topic, please, uh, about this lecture, please email me. If you happen to visit my website for additional lectures, please consider donating. If you're studying for your CPA, study hard. 
if you're studying for your college studies, technically you are studying for your CPA, study hard, 